In this reading of David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, we continue reading from Book 1, Laying the Foundation. Chapter 2, Section 8 On Pleasure and Pain David The deeper I have gone, the more my life has simplified. But it has not been a simplification based on the ascetic paths. The old way was sacrifice, like in some of the old mystical paths where people would literally do harm to their bodies, to sacrifice. Some of you have probably heard about Gnosticism. The Gnostics were a group that came right after or around the time of Jesus. A lot of the Gnostics got Jesus' teaching, My kingdom is not of this world. Book of John, chapter 18 And the kingdom of God is within you. Book of Luke, chapter 17 The Gnostics really got the fact that the world was not real that Jesus was speaking of a spiritual kingdom, that it was not an earthly kingdom that the apostles and the Jews were looking for. But the ego's belief in sacrifice is so deeply rooted in the mind and the Gnostics kind of fell into the ego traps of making the error real. They thought... If the world is not real, then the world must be bad. The body is part of the world, so the body must be bad. Therefore, I will starve the body, or I will go out into the desert, and I will do things to harm my body, to prove to myself and to God that the world is not real. Unfortunately, The ego loves that. That is like playing into its hands because whenever you judge something as negative or bad in the world, you make it real. Remember when we talked about projecting duality and judging things as good and bad? Once you judge something as negative in the world, you reinforce it in your mind as being real. Then there was another sect of the Gnostics. They kind of said, the world is not real, so we can indulge in all the vices and pleasures of the world. They taught that if you did not get them done in one lifetime, you would reincarnate and come back and you could just keep indulging in the vices of the world until you were free of them. But that does not work either because vices and both pleasure and pain make the body real. If any of you have ever tried to do the lessons... I can see peace instead of this. Or there is nothing to fear when you have a splitting headache. They just do not go together. Pain is like a witness that says, I am hurting here. I am guilty. Or I am fearful. Or I am frail. And pleasure does the same thing because pleasure focuses the mind on the body. It identifies the mind with the body and the sensations of the world. The Hindus and all the great mystics of the world are onto this thing of pleasure and pain. They are like two sides of the same coin. The ego does not tell us that. The ego says to maximize pleasure and minimize pain. 
avoid pain. Isn't that pretty common wisdom in the world? The mind in a deceived state actually believes it can tell the difference. Do pain and pleasure seem the same to you? In a deceived state, they seem to be very, very different. But they are just two sides of the same coin. There are passages such as, It is impossible to seek for pleasure through the body and not find pain. Text, chapter 19, section 4. There are physical things that seem to be attractive, like a little band-aid over the terrible loneliness and emptiness that is felt inside. It is like, this is a quick little fix. I can't have that hot fudge sundae that I love. It brings me a lot of pleasure and takes my mind off the loneliness and despair that I feel. For about 10 minutes. And then, in another couple of hours, what is next? What am I looking for? It is the attraction to guilt, whether it is alcohol or marijuana, sexual addictions or food. You can use movies, wanting to just sit in your house all day and watch movies. I do not want to face the world. I want to just be distracted. The course is so great because it unveils the ego and all of its schemes, showing us just how crazy and uns insane its thought system is. Under fear's orders, the body will pursue guilt, serving its master whose attraction to guilt maintains the whole illusion of its existence. This, then, is the attraction of pain. Ruled by this perception, the body becomes the servant of pain. Seeking it dutifully and obeying the idea that pain is pleasure. It is this idea that underlies all of the ego's heavy investment in the body. And it is this insane relationship that it keeps hidden and yet feeds upon. To you it teaches that the body's pleasure is happiness, yet to itself it whispers. It is death. Text, chapter 19, section 4.